All right, guys, in this video, we are going to learn the basics of working with forms in React. We will see how to capture input from form elements like the input tag, text area tag, and also a select tag and have the data available for form submission. In regular HTML, form elements like input, text area, and so on are responsible on their own to handle the user input and update their respective values. But what we want is for React to control the form elements instead. Such form elements whose value is controlled by React is called a controlled component. Now this sounds harder than it is. Let me break it down and then we can take a look at the code. Consider an input element. The input element can have a value. The input element's value can also change based on user interaction. For example, a user typing in their email address. Now how do we deal with values that can change within a component? We use state and set state. So in a controlled component, the value of the input field is set to the state property. Next, we have an onChange event fired whenever there is a change in the input field's value. In the onChange handler, we use the setState method to update the state. When the state gets updated, the render method is called and the new state is assigned as a value to the input element. So there is this cycle of setting the initial value from the state, propagating the changed value to the state and then back to the input field. React will always have access to the component state which reflects the updated values of the form elements. That state object can then be used to submit the form data when needed. So let's see how all of this translates to code. Back in our project, I'm going to create a new file called form.js. Within the file, I'm going to create a new class component using the React snippet RCE. I'm going to remove the named export and add some text to the return statement, form component. Now in the app component, I'm going to include the form component. If you save the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text form component. Now let's add our very first form control. In the form component, I'm going to replace the existing JSX with a form tag. Within the form tag, a label that says username, followed by the corresponding input. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the label and the input field. Right now though, the form is regular HTML. It is not a controlled React component. To convert this into a controlled component, we need to follow two steps. The first step is to create a component state that will control the value of the input element. So within the component, I am going to use the snippet rconst to create a constructor. I am going to add a new state property called username and initialize it to an empty string. Next, I'm going to assign this state property as the value of the input element. So input type is equal to text and value is going to be equal to this dot state dot username. Now, if you go back to the browser and try to type in a username, you're going to find out that the input doesn't reflect the changes, which brings us to the second step, handling the onChange event. So back in our component, I'm going to create an onChange event handler. So on the input element, let's listen to the onChange event and assign a handler called handle username change. Now let's define the method as a class property. So handle username change and the property is going to be equal to an arrow function. It just so happens that when you assign a handler to the onChange event, the event itself is passed as a parameter to the handler. So we have one parameter called event. 
From this event, we can extract the value of the input element using event.target.value. So anytime you change the input value, that value is captured using event.target.value. All we have to do is simply assign this captured value back to the state property. And to update the state, we will be using the setState method. So within the function body, this dot set state username set to event dot target dot value. Now let's save this and test it out. In the browser, if I type in my name, you can see that it works. The difference now though is that we are working with a controlled component and React state is the single source of truth for this input element. You can see that we have username as a state property which is supplied as a value to the value attribute of the input element. Whenever there is a change, that new value is propagated to handle username change which sets back the state property username to the updated value. And when the state is set, the render method is called again and the new value is available to the value property. And that is how we have a controlled component. Next, let's try to create controlled components for a text area as well as a select tag. This will also help you get used to the controlled component way of working with form elements. There are three simple steps. Add the element HTML, assign the component state to the element value, and assign an onChange handler that updates the state. Let's begin with step one, adding the HTML. So within the form, I'm going to add a new div tag that has a label called comments and a text area. Second step, assign the component state to the element value. So I'm going to create a new state, comments, which is initialized to an empty string. And on the text area element, value is equal to this dot state dot comments. The third and final step is to assign the change handler that updates the state. On change is equal to this dot handle comments change. Handle comments change is going to be a class property, so is equal to an arrow function which takes event as its argument, and we are going to call this dot set state passing in comments with event dot target dot value. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text area. Type in something and it should work as expected. Now let's quickly take a look at the select tag. Again, we have three simple steps. Step one, add the HTML. We are going to have a label that says topic and then the select tag. And as options, we are going to have React, Angular, and Vue. So three options, React, Angular, and Vue, and their respective values in lowercase. Step two, assign the component state to the element value. So I'm going to create a new state property. This is going to be topic and initially let's set it to react. On the select tag, we can add the value attribute and this is going to be set to this dot state dot topic. Step three, assign the change handler that updates the state. So on change, is going to be equal to this dot handle topic change, which is going to be a class property similar to the previous handlers. This dot set state topic is going to be equal to event dot target dot value. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the select field. By default, React should be selected as the topic and you should also be able to select any of the other options. So there you go, an input element, a text area, and a select tag. 
all of them as controlled components in React. Let's wind up this video by understanding how we can submit this form data. I'm going to go back to VS Code and in the JSX, I'm going to add a submit button. If you go back to the browser and click on the submit button, you can see that the page refreshes. So right now the form has the default HTML form behavior of browsing to a new page when the submit button is clicked. A common approach, however, is to have a JavaScript function that handles the submission of the form. And that method will also have access to the data that the user entered into the form. So back in VS Code, on the form tag, we are going to assign a handler to the on submit event. This dot handle submit. Now we can define the handler. Handle submit, and this is going to be equal to an arrow function, which is going to receive event as an argument. And to retrieve the form data that the user has entered into the form, we use the component state. For now, let's simply alert those values. Alert within backticks dollar curly braces this dot state dot username this dot state dot comments and this dot state dot topic. And of course, I'm missing the fat arrow syntax. If you now go back to the browser, fill in the details, and click on submit, you should be able to see the alert message with the form data. When I dismiss the alert though, you can see that the page refreshes and the filled in data is lost. To avoid this, we simply add an event.prevent default. This will prevent the default behavior of form submission. So back in handle submit, after the alert statement, event.prevent default. If I now go back to the browser, fill in the details and click on submit, you can see that we have the alert message. When I click on OK, the page doesn't refresh. Now, suppose you don't really have a form tag with which you can listen to the on submit event. What you can do is create a button, create an on click event handler on that button and have the exact same body as the on submit event. Now again, type is equal to submit will give the user the ability to submit forms by hitting the enter key, which is always good. So please do consider user experience when developing your forms. All right, that is pretty much what I have on the basics of working with forms in React. As code cleanup, I will destructure the state properties in the render method. So const username comments and topic from this dot state. And now I can remove this dot state from all three occurrences. All right, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.